And hello, and good Tuesday afternoon. Ryan Belmore here, owner and publisher of What's Up Noob. And it's been a little while. It feels like it's been a, a day or two. Mr. Frank Prosnitz joins me. And hey, Frank. Hey, wow, that's what you look like. That is what I look like. How are you? I'm doing okay. How are you doing? A side note, but um, it, it's it's funny because I, I ran into one of our other writers over the weekend. Have we seen each other in the last – yes, we have. In the last year, we have. It's been a while. It's been a while, but uh, this is how we connect now. And uh, running into one of our contributors, I was like, wow, I haven't actually seen you in person where I can see your whole body in uh, more than a year here. Yeah. So. Hopefully it ends soon. Hopefully I don't know how you go with the intro there, but you can try. <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs> well, let's see. Who do we have today? Oh, we have Daniel Snyder today. All um, right, excellent. And what are we going to be talking about? Well, it's going to be a really uh, important issue. Daniel Snydecker, he is um, on, on the board and he is um, uh, co-chair of the Toro Synagogue Foundation Education Committee. They have a, uh, uh, a pretty aggressive and pretty um, spectacular lecture series. Um, first one is is going to, and, and uh, we'll talk about that momentarily, but is really going to center around anti-Semitism. I just looked at headlines today. We know that the climate in the country is is uh, pretty difficult. Um, there is a, a racial ethnic divide that's unbelievable. Headlines today, a total Jap New Jersey newspaper apologizes for using anti-Semitic epithet in photo caption. I'm ashamed because I used to work for that newspaper. There was a New Jersey newspaper, the Asbury Park Press, it was my first daily newspaper. And uh, it was in a caption on a photo of a female Orthodox nurse. There's some other uh, uncalled for words in that caption as well. That's right. Uh, unbelievable. Headline, pregnant Orthodox, and this again, March 22nd, yesterday, pregnant Orthodox woman assaulted in London. Again, yesterday, Brazilian political leader says Jews sacrifice children. Um, Anti-Semitism is alive and well around the globe. And, and uh, a really important issue, but it goes along <clears throat> with uh, uh, with discrimination against uh, Asians, against Blacks, against all minority groups. Um, that's why I think the upcoming uh, uh, lecture that is on uh, April 1st in the, the first of the uh, uh, Judah Toro lecture series is so important. Uh, Daniel Snydecker, maybe you can tell us a little bit about that, the series, and, and who the presenter is. Hi, good morning, Frank. Good morning, Ryan. Uh, real pleasure to be with you here this morning. Uh, and you're absolutely right. This is a this is a pressing issue today. Um, and um, the on April 1st, we have uh, one of the foremost um, spokespeople against anti-Semitism. Uh, um, David Harris is CEO of the American Jewish Committee. It's a global organization that fights anti-Semitism and fights for equal rights and, and, and fair treatment um, for all people all across the globe. And we're delighted that he's, um, he's agreed to be part of our program at, at, the, at, uh, uh, at the Turo Synagogue Foundation. Um, we have pivoted to digital, other not-for-profits have, and um, ironically, it's enabled us to get a much bigger audience. We've got, we've got a, um, you know, at least 250 people signed up for this, which is an indicator of the importance of this, an indicator, indicator that people know that anti-Semitism is a real problem. And uh, Harris will um, we'll give a, a brief introductory remark. We'll talk about the, the global nature of anti-Semitism and what it's doing here in America. And then he'll open it up for questions. Uh, Harris believes very strongly that, that, that just lecturing at people is not the answer. Um, if he can address our problems, our local issues, our local fears and concerns, our local questions, um, that engages us. And, and he's apparently a very uh, engaging uh, presenter. So we're, we're delighted to have him. Dan, is there, um, uh, is there room for more people to sign up for this program? Yes. yes. And um, there are several ways that you can get into that. Uh, one, you can go to the scrolling across the bottom of your screen now. You can go to the Turo Synagogue Foundation site. Um, you can also go to our Facebook page. Um, you can also uh, call Turo Synagogue. 
um, and there's there's plenty of room. Again, part of the part of the, the the beauty of the Zoom platform is that we can we can accommodate up to 500 people. So there's plenty of room. We want folks to to be part of this. Um, they'll, you'll have the opportunity to submit questions via the chat function down below. I'm assuming by now most of us are familiar with this format. Um, and um, we'll have someone, you know, going through those questions and picking out the ones that um, that that are most salient. So it's a very important program, and and um, you know, Toro Synagogue's foundation's mission is to is to promote and teach about religious diversity um, and the, the the colonial Jewish history, but the but the history of Toro Synagogue, and all of those things come together. Um, around these attitudes about about Jews or religious religious toleration, and um, and and bias um, are are the opposite ends of a of a spectrum, and um, so it's right in our roundhouse, right uh, a really important thing for us to be doing to launch this year's Judaturo series. We can't we we have to face these truths, um, and uh, we we really firmly believe that our educational. Um, mission is not to just to entertain, but to address important issues. And this will this will start us off. I find with a lot of these kinds of lectures, uh, they 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 attract those people. I would presume that of the two hundred and fifty people who you've got signed up, two hundred forty of them have to be Jewish. And so, how do we reach beyond the Jewish community? these kinds of programs um, we have actually uh, taken taken positive steps to um, to get out of that box um, the church community corporation uh, to, excuse me the, uh, the uh, uh, community Baptist Church has posted us on their website uh, we reached out to um, Channing Church to Episcopal churches in town I'm having a conversation with Mike Miller at the Y the Newport County YMCA tomorrow, um, and all of these organizations have stepped up to help us get the word out. They realize that it's important. And um, if you look at our attendance list, they're not all Jews. They're um, sure there are lots of Jews, but uh, it's important that um, that non-Jews hear this as well. Is there a cost? No, to, uh... nope, nope. It's free. Uh, we've had a gift from uh, from an anonymous donor to to uh, make a contribution to the AJC American Jewish Committee, and and uh, so all all costs are 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 covered, and this is a free event. Let me ask you this one more question relative to that, and in your experience and and what you hear, people hear about. I had the experience of being I do a radio show in the morning, and I I talked about uh, we we were talking a little bit about. Uh, racism this morning and whatever, and I'm I'm getting people denying white Anglo-Saxon uh, pr Protestants basically denying that there's racism anywhere and and discrimination against anyone of color and religion and, and all of that, uh, which in itself is is uh, it's difficult to comprehend. Do we and and what? How do you perceive the level of racism, anti-Semitism that exists in Rhode Island as opposed to Elsewhere, I you know that that's a very good question, and that's actually one of the questions that we've got queued up to ask David Harris. Um, our our experience is is I, I think is is like many other people. We feel that that um, you know racism isn't doesn't exist in our neighborhood. Um, Anti-Semitism is you know happens somewhere else, but that's not true. Um, you know, um, raising my kids um, Jewish here, they would they would climb on a school bus um, in Middletown and get um, taunted uh, with anti-Semitic remarks back uh, 20, 20, 30 years ago. So it's here, um, and and we need to address it. We need to address it where we live. We can't let someone else do it. We need to. We need to take responsibility for it, address it where we where we live, where we can. And, um, you know, Harris's point is that it takes groups like the like the like the foundation working together with with local community groups to pull the curtain back on this. Um, 
you know, uh, we've, we've got to work outside of the of just just being Jewish box. Um, we've got to reach out and 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 uncover it. And plus, this is something that you know, my my uh, we have people from Oregon registered for this event. So again, it's the beauty of Zoom. We we're we're out out beyond Rhode Island with this program. And and Turo Synagogue is an important national historic site. And given what's in our mission, um, it's our responsibility to take this program to a national audience. The the national trust we are we're a, a national trust for historic preservation historic site. And they have 27 sites around the country. We're one of them. And they have promoted this event um, on their website. So the word is out across the country. Um, and, and Toro Synagogue is living up to its responsibility for being a nationally important building with a nationally, um, with a national audience in this program and in the others that will follow. Dan, I'm sure there are some people who don't know the history of the building. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can you can do that. Put it in its perspective historically, and right. also uh, touch on the the uh, history of this lecture series. Right. Um, the building is 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 one of America's finest buildings. It's it's part of a trio of buildings designed um, by Peter Harrison, the colonial architect, um, who was. Uh, um, remarkably skilled and, and also who had a, an incredible library of architectural books um, that he used to design these buildings. Um, the Jews first came to, to Newport in about 17, 1630 rather, and they stayed for a while, but uh, Newport wasn't ready for them economically. Um, so they left, went back down to New York. They came back up in the 1720s and that's when their, when their congregation and their life here in Newport began to flourish. And by uh, the late 1750s, they, they had enough presence, um, enough resources so that they engaged Harrison to design this building for them. And it was erected in 1763. It's a gem of classical architecture. From the outside, it's, it's rather plain, serene. The inside is exuberant with, with decorative details, with uh, with brass fixtures, with, um, you know, this is incredible classical architectural details. Um, and it is, uh, it is, we deserve our status as a national historic site and as a historic site of the National Trust for Historic Preservation. The, the, the National Historic Site designation means that we're part of the Park Service where um, we, we do collaborative programs. Our site director, Merrill Cauley, who's done a fantastic job at, 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 the, at, the, at the synagogue, uh, brings groups from all over the world in. And so we use the, the site to, to teach these issues, to teach about architecture, to teach about the, the history of Jews, but also to teach about religious toleration. And Newport's a perfect place to do that with our background of um, of religious toleration. That, that toleration is, is a little more complicated than we often present it. It's, 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 about, it's, it's not just about, um, you know, uh, sure, come on in and practice, do whatever you want. Um, it, it, it had an instrumental side to it. You know, the Jews performed vital functions for the economies where they came, where they were welcomed. And the leaders of Newport knew that, um, so it's a it's a complicated, wonderful, rich history, um, and uh, and so the building has served that purpose, has become this this uh, the springboard for educational programs, and and uh, we get folks from all over the world. It went through a kind of a period of decline after the revolution, the Jews, the original Jews, the Sephardic Jews, the Jews that came from Spain and Portugal who founded it, left after the revolution. And then slowly the Jewish population built up again. But um, by the end of the 19th century, they were primarily from Eastern Europe. And um, they came in and, and revived the, 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 the synagogue and saved it. Um, so we've gone through several different periods in our history, but but um, it seems to me every step of the way, 
Um, there have been folks that 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 care about the synagogue, realize its importance, and step up to preserve it and to carry the message forward. Dan, talk to me a little bit about the, or talk to us a little bit about the multicultural nature of the community in which Toro uh, actually exists. Yeah, um, especially in the time when, um, uh, from from the time it was built until say. Um, after the Civil War, the historic hill in which um, Toro Synagogue is located was a, a very diverse community. There were Africans, there were um, African Americans, there were um, um, people from the Caribbean, people from Latin America living here, passing through. It was a dynamic, vital place. Um, and it's ironic that in the time, <laughs> in the time of slavery, whites and blacks knew more about each other than they do today. Um, the uh, at the at the end of slavery in in Rhode Island, 1807, um, the the blacks stayed in the historic hill, formed churches here, and because the churches were here, they continued to live here. So they were here when the Jews from Eastern Europe came back, came to, came immigrated to, to Newport, and those two communities lived closely together um, and worked together. Um, and it, it's only as, as, you know, as the, um, as the area became gentrified um, that, that, that the races have been kind of moved apart by, largely by economic forces um, but but economic forces are often the engine of racism and and um, and anti-Semitism. So it's a fascinating history, and uh, we will we will tell that part of it at the end of our series. This series um, got started not last year but the year before with a couple of wonderful lectures. Um, one by Haisha Dinner, who's from um, New York University, and she talked about food waste, about how food was such an important um, motivating force behind immigration in the 19th century on the part of both Irish and Jews um, and Italians. Food was a central issue for both, for all three of those groups. And that was our, uh, the initial lecture of the Judah Turo lecture series. And then it was followed up by a uh, wonderful program. And we collaborated with a number of organizations um, in town to tell that story. Uh, the next lecture was um, by Beth Wenger, who was the, was the chair of the, the history department at the University of Pennsylvania. And she talked about, about how we looked at the old, how we looked at, the, at, at Jerusalem and, and at, at, the, you know, at the Holy Land and how that varied over time. And following her lecture, we had a, a really interesting presentation of, of uh, leaders of faith, different faith communities uh, who presented their own churches or, or synagogues idea about the Holy Land. And it was fascinating. It was some, is some difficult issues were raised. But then we had to go on hiatus because of COVID. It kind of, you know, we're a, we're a small organization. We got one full time or not even full time. We got two very part-time staff people and but a, thankfully an active committee. Um, so we couldn't pick up as quickly as some other organizations and, and get active with, with virtual programs, but we have now, and we've got a great lineup for the, for the coming year. Tell us about that lineup. Okay. Yeah. So after, after this, uh, um, after the lecture by, after the conversation with Harris, um, we have a lecture by uh, Tom Mays, Thompson Mays, and Tom is the um, chief legal counsel at the National Trust for Historic Preservation, the group that, that, that has embraced us as one of their historic sites. He wrote a book called Why Old Places Matter. And we tend to forget, we tend, we're so, so surrounded by old places here in Newport. Um, we, we, we tend to tend to get complacent and forget about why these places matter, why places like Toro Synagogue matter. Tom had a pre to Rome and went and studied in Rome uh, with, with an international group of people. And, and this book was the result of that. And he reminds us why old places matter and why it's so important that we 
work to preserve and interpret them. You know, it's not just enough to, to make sure it's got a coat of paint on it. You got to, you know, if you've got one of these buildings, you've got to interpret it. You've got to take its message as aggressively as you can out to the public. Then following that, we kind of return to the, 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 the culture of the Jews who first came here. You remember I said that they were Sephardic. They came from, um, and that comes from the, the area in the Iberian Peninsula. They came from Portugal and Spain. Um, and, uh, and they have their own culture. That's a, um, and, and in late June, early July, we're going to have a man by the name of Jared Erdery, who's the foremost um, expert on Sephardic music, which is a really wonderful, haunting, lively music that combines um, Jewish influences, Spanish influences, Portuguese influences, and, and Moroccan uh, Arabic influences. And that will be live streamed from, of all places, Warsaw, Poland. And again, without Zoom, um, we, it would be impossible. We couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't bring him over here and to give a concert in, in Turo. Um, so um, that's in in June, July, and then in the fall, we'll have we'll return to this issue about that you raised about the about the relationship between um, uh, Turo and the the community. The first um, program we'll have is a panel discussion that's essentially an oral history with people who are either descended from those 19th, early 20th century immigrants, and there are a lot of them still still around. One of the members of our of our education committee, Steve Hutlers, um, his grandparents were part of that migration, and he has, you know, stories to tell about that. Rita Sloan is another one. They she knows about where these Jews came in the late 19th, early 20th century. So we'll gather a bunch of those folks in a Zoom, you know, um, conversation. It'll be, you know, kind of like when we're sitting around the kitchen table remembering our history. So we'll do that for the Jews of the late 19th, early 20th century. And then um, thanks to the, um, the input from Keith Stokes, who's our co-chair of the education committee. It's one of, the, one of the really wonderful things about this committee. We've got great people uh, working on it, very committed, very dedicated, very knowledgeable, very connected. Keith has suggested that we do a second panel that looks at African-Americans. During that time, as I mentioned earlier, they were living right close by and they were involved in the life of the synagogue. There are people still in Newport who remember that time from stories they heard. Um, and we'll, that, that will be a, uh, a panel discussion as well. There was, there was, you know, to be honest, we'll uncover some unpleasant truths. We'll uncover some truths that, that Jews were slave owners and slave traders, that, that blacks are often anti-Semitic um, and Jews are often racist. So um, these programs um, will be fun and entertaining, but they'll have that serious point too, that they'll address these issues, get them out in the open. Um, the overall goal is to kind of humanize both sides of this debate, both sides of this question, humanize the Jewish the Jewish communities who have lived here, plural, um, and um, so it'll be. I think we've got a really great great lineup, and I really want to thank the the members of the committee uh, for their suggestions. Uh, Shirley Sanders was the one that suggested David Harris. We thought we would do a program on anti-Semitism, and we had a couple of ideas about who could present, but she was the one that said, "No, you got to get David Harris." Um, and uh, and it's, it starts us off on a, on a really high note. Uh, Harris is, you know, is internationally renowned. He just became an officer in the French, uh, the French Legion of Honor. He's, he's, been, he's been awarded prizes in, in Israel and France and Germany, all over the world. He's a respected advocate for, um, for, for Jews and for toleration. So that's that's where we are. That's what we're doing. We're having a having a great time doing it. A lot of a lot of fun, um, and these programs will be be worthwhile attending. Sign up. Um, get involved in this. It's uh, you know, 
Do you see Toro as um, as perhaps a platform for a lot of the, this dialogue that seems so necessary today? That we bring we bring ethnicities and and cultures together to uh, to discover one another, to talk to one another, to understand one another. Yes, absolutely. And that was you know from that first lecture that I talked about. It was it brought Italians, um, Irish, Irish Catholics, Italian Catholics, and Irish Catholics and Jews together under one programmatic roof. And we that's been a theme all the way along. So absolutely, it's it's um, again, it's a um, one of the powerful things that a that a that a building like Toro can do. It's why Toro matters. It can tell these stories. It can be the kind of platform that you just mentioned. Anything you uh, anything you need to add, or Ryan, you have anything you, you wanted to to add? Well, we we danced around the topic, um, and I just wonder. You know, obviously, I can only imagine that COVID nineteen has. Uh, has been a challenging time for Torah Synagogue and Torah Synagogue yep. Foundation. Uh, just wonder what you could tell us, you know, what you see, maybe uh, some optimism uh, for the rest of the year, maybe when synagogue reopens for tours, maybe when events happen in place again, things like that. Yeah. And it opens, opens for services for that matter. Yeah. That's, that's still down the road. Um, I think it, you know, we're, we're, we're um, um, operating out of an abundance of caution about that. Um, Evan Smith is is on our board and gives us the the kind of the latest update, the the data based updates about about all of this. Um, originally, he was saying not till mid next year, but I think there's there's with the with the um, rapid rate of vaccination uh, that there's a there's a there's a um, you know the light at the end of the tunnel has, tunnel has gotten a little brighter. Um, I think we'll be, there's a chance we might do our last two programs as a hybrid um, uh, format where we have actual people in uh, either in Turo Synagogue or in a, in a, in a inside of a building. So there can be some interaction, some real people interaction. Um, uh, but I don't think that we're going to be doing any, any of these judicial lecture series programs live and in person until until next spring for, you know, at the earliest. Um, we've got some great programs lined up for that. One of the, one of the things we want to do is have a, um, there's a, an, uh, um, a nationally known expert on uh, classical architecture, on the kind of architecture that, that distinguishes Redwood Library, um, Toro Synagogue, and the Brick Market, all three of Harrison's buildings. And we, we want to do a, um, a kind of a weekend long walking tour of those three sites with some talks along the way with with um, people from Redwood talking about their building, people from the uh, Newport Historical Society talking about the brick market and and those of us at Toro talking about Toro. Um, put that in, link those, link those buildings and those communities together um, through that kind of program to a stroll down the street. They're not very far apart. It won't be a long walk, but it, <laughs> it should be very interesting. And then we are kind of continuing on that theme. We're looking at the idea of, of doing a program on the other Jewish colonial synagogues. There were a bunch of them in Savannah, down in the Caribbean, um, in Philadelphia. Um, and and, and um, so we, um, let me just, um, and um, so we want to get a program together uh, with that, have you know, have people from those synagogues come up, um, or maybe even organize a tour once we can get out and about again, and uh, you know, get a bus tour or something, or meet down in Savannah, and uh, or or fly to the Caribbean and 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 explore the um, uh, Curacao and and um, and the and the coast of Suriname is rich with Jewish history that we shared. Toro Synagogue was part of the, you know, was part of the Atlantic economy and had connections. One of the things the Jews did so well was maintain those networks, those networks for culture, for, you know, religious support, but also for economic activity. And, and that program um, would explore that network, those connections. So we got a lot planned. It's a, it's, again, it's, 
the, the Victoria Synagogue, like so many buildings in Newport, has such a rich story to tell. You know, it's just full of, um, of, of really neat stuff and, um, and important stuff as well. So uh, the, the foundation and the committee are fully committed to, to making the most of that. And, uh, you know, just, just like to, to thank Meryl Colley, Laura Pedrick, who's the, who's the chair, the new chair of the uh, Toro Synagogue Foundation, replacing the late and much, still much missed B. Ross. We lost B uh, last fall. Uh, Ann Arnold, who does some work with the Irish History Museum as well, uh, has really helped us with publicity. Um, and uh, thanks to all of all the committee members as well. Yeah, I want to thank you. Um, it's a great program. Lots for people to learn from all of these lectures. Um, and uh, uh, it, it is, I, I hope, a springboard for us understanding each other better. And, uh, and while I don't think we have the ability to eliminate racism and uh, uh, anti-Semitism, we certainly have an ability to, um, uh, to change some people's minds. That's exactly right, Frank. That, that's so true. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you, Dan. For me. Yep. See you all later. All right. And uh, torosynagogue.org is where you can find out more information about the April 1st lecture. And then stay tuned there for uh, the upcoming schedule as well as uh, lectures down the line. Yeah. Yeah. They sound like great lectures. Um, and the right price, it's free. Yes, and you don't even have to leave your home. That's right. Yeah, you can dress up and wear a silly hat. Well, this isn't a silly hat. This is an exciting hat. So what's up with Newport hat? There you go. All right. So torosynagogue.org uh, is where you can go. And uh, when you get to that homepage, um, you'll see it right there in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, Frank, this isn't the only interesting conversation we have this week. We have the General Treasurer coming up on Thursday at noontime. I'm going to talk about a lot of things, a lot of initiatives that he's talking about that uh, will help small businesses and individuals um, during the uh, uh, during this period with the the, uh, the pandemic. Um, talk about um, where you can actually get help, um, getting your taxes done for free. Um, uh, tools for uh, for small businesses that can help them through this. Tools for individuals who may have lost their business um, but can find a little bit of a safety net as they kind of redevelop things and and uh, and express their entrepreneurial spirit. So look forward to that discussion. All right. And that will be uh, same bat channel, same time. We will be uh, right back here at noon on Thursday with General Treasurer Seth Magaziner. All right, Mr. Prosnitz, thank you very much. Thank you, Ryan. And uh, one more time, torosynagogue.org for more information on that. If you missed any portion of this interview, you can go on whatsupnoop.com or on our Facebook page, which is Facebook dot com backslash what's up noob and uh watch it anytime share with your friends and share with anybody who might be interested all right mr presence all right thank you have a good day all right until next time thanks for